What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. We've got something new in tow, literally behind the Storyteller Psy mode. Since I spoke to you guys last, we made it back to Colorado. We had off of traveling for about a week and then we picked up this trailer and headed north. I towed this thing for about five to 600 miles today from around Denver, Colorado, all the way up to kind of right outside of the Grand Teton National Park here in Wyoming. And this is going to be my very first time using this trailer. It's kind of bare bones right now, but it has a ton of potential because these things basically come as sort of like a blank slate. Now this trailer that I'm testing is kind of a collaboration between two different companies, Russick Mountain Overland, who actually builds the trailer, and then Free Spirit Recreation, who you guys know if you follow me on the channel here, they make tents, but they also take these Rustic Mountain Overland trailers and kind of upfit them to fit whatever type of needs you may have. So let's take a closer look and I'll give you guys some of my first impressions of the Rustic Mountain Overland Free Spirit Recreation Patrol XCT. The Patrol XCT is going to be the perfect addition for any kind of overlanding setup, whether you want to carry more gear, have extra sleeping accommodations, or maybe you want to set up a full camping kit that you don't bring with you everywhere you go. This thing is going to shine in a lot of different departments. Now the XCT is based off of Rustic Mountain Overland's XC model with a few new improvements. This thing is a little bit larger than their XC model with the addition of that new tongue box up front. Before we get into that new storage and all of the other storage on this thing though, let's take a look at what makes this thing great off-road. Up towards the front of the trailer, I have this thing connected to my Sprinter van with a lock and roll hitch. This thing has crazy amounts of articulation and while we haven't been wheeling like crazy to get up to the spot that we're at today, the articulation that this hitch setup has gives you great approach and departure angles and I really don't even notice that the trailer is behind the van. These trailers can be built with a few different options and this one in particular has the Timberin HD 2200 axleless suspension. Now I've never really pulled a trailer geared towards off-roading like this, but so far, like I said, I don't even notice this thing behind the van. With that Timberin suspension and the hitch, which can basically do like a full 360, the van flexes as it needs to and then the trailer just kind of does its own thing back there. And it's actually kind of interesting to watch this thing as we drive down a trail. Now the Patrol typically would come with a 31 inch all-terrain tire on a 15 inch wheel. However, I knew I was going to set this thing up to be pulled behind my Storyteller. So of course, I had to start the modifications already. To match the side mode, I of course went with the Alvans Talon wheels, which are really rated for Sprinter vans, heavy loads, and all sorts of off-roading capabilities. It has two different valves in it, which I also included the Apex valves into. And these are wrapped in the Toyo Tires Open Country RT Trails. Same size, same everything as you guys have seen on my van. Is this wheel and tire setup a little bit overkill? Yes, I think it might be, but that's kind of what we're going for here. So we've got the lock and roll hitch, the Timberin suspension, the Owl wheels and Toyo tires. And these trailers as they sit stock are just a little bit over a thousand pounds, which makes pulling a trailer like this with basically any vehicle very easy. You could pull this behind a Tacoma, a 4Runner, a Jeep. There are so many options of things you could do with a trailer like this and also you're not really limited on what type of vehicle is going to be pulling this thing. Now let's talk about the actual storage on this trailer. Up front this does have the addition of the tongue box over the standard XC and the dimensions of this box up front is going to be perfect for an addition of a fridge slide out in the future. I have a bunch of different ideas of how I'm going to kind of build this thing out over the next couple of weeks and months and I'm going to sum all of those up a little bit later. So back from the tongue box, we're getting into the main storage of this trailer. On the very back of the trailer, we do have some nice bright LED lights. This is using a four pin connector and it works perfectly with basically anything that you're towing it with. And then down below, you will also notice there is a hitch receiver there. So you could throw a bike rack on the back and bring mountain bikes with on your journey if they don't fit inside the massive storage area. Speaking of that storage area, you of course have sort of like a tailgate in the back, which does lock. I'm just using a simple combination padlock on here, but you could get pretty crafty with how you keep this thing secure. So that door just swings open and you have really quick access to your gear. But one of the coolest things about this trailer is how the whole top system actually opens. We have two latches on the left side of the trailer and if we pop these open, the whole thing articulates up with the rack, all of your storage on top, and even a rooftop tent. Now these struts are super strong, so if you don't have a tent on top or a lot of gear in your boxes, it's going to be possibly a little bit tough to close. But with this current setup that you see here, it really doesn't take all that much effort to close it up. 
Now with the top of the trailer opening up to the side like that, it kind of acts as like a truck bed. You can just reach over the side, pull out chairs or whatever gear you have in there. It just makes accessing the gear a heck of a lot easier than pulling it through the back tailgate. Now let's talk about what's actually on top of this thing because this is where Rustic Mountain and Free Spirit kind of teamed up to make this patrol XCT exactly how you see it here. Now you can order a base trailer directly through RMO. However, if you want to add a little bit more flair to it, have some more functionality, useful space, and things like this glorious, huge rooftop tent on there, then you can actually place an order for a trailer like this directly through Free Spirit Recreation. So Free Spirit takes this off-road trailer and starts by upfitting it with one of the coolest racks that I've seen on the market. I have not tested one before, but I am very thankful that I'm able to test this thing out now. We've got a full rack here from Lightner. This is the same rack system that you may see on trucks out there. It's really essentially a truck bed rack, but it has a ton of cool functionality. The rack is relatively lightweight. It's all machined out of aluminum, and what's cool about it is that it's modular, and that's exactly what I'm looking for when setting up a trailer like this. You'll notice on the left side of the trailer here, we have a large Lightner box, and then on the other side, we've added a few more things just so I can kind of show you guys what's possible. We have a smaller box towards the front, which is housing a really packed out first aid kit, which is pretty neat. In the middle, we have a molly panel, which is going to be good for mounting fire extinguishers, max tracks, Packs, roto packs, jerry cans, extra fuel, basically whatever you would put onto a molly panel. And then in the very back, we have a pressurized water system for Lightner, and all of this stuff bolts up to the rack super easily. They have a ton of other accessories out there too. So after using this trailer for the next week or so, I'm really going to kind of fine tune it and make a decision on what I want to do as far as the Lightner accessories go. And then last but not least, bumping up to the top, we of course have a huge tent. One of the biggest tents coming from Free Spirit Recreation. This is the brand new High Country V2 King. This is a king size bed inside of this tent. And as long as the weather stays how it is right now, I think we might actually sleep in there tonight. Now I'm gonna bring you guys a little bit of a first person view here so you can kind of see what it would be like to interact with a system like this. Let's start right here with the hitch setup. You can kind of see how this thing articulates. If you really wanna see how this thing performs off-road, you'll have to check back on the channel here in a few days when I'm using this thing off-road. But so far the setup has been pretty simple and it fits just perfectly with this backwoods bumper. I did have to get a little adapter down here, that way all of the lights work. But it takes just about a minute to connect or disconnect the trailer from the vehicle. Now over here we have the arc jack system which is very easy to operate, you just swing it down. And then you'll notice that the handle is actually removable. So I'm storing that in my owl box right over here. It's just a magnetic handle that pops into place like that and then when you don't need it, take it off and store it. You can store it in the trailer but since my owl box is right here. That's where it's living for now. Now just in front of the tongue box here, you have this panel which would actually work for probably like a bike rack. I think I might try to do something like that in the future. Or extra fuel cans, other camping gear that you can kind of strap down here as long as it's secure. And then on top of the front tongue box here, you have this little lip that kind of runs around the top of it. I think this would be a pretty good spot for maybe a solar panel. As you're driving around, you could put a battery system inside of this tongue box. I've got some ideas and I guess we can kind of talk about it as I go around. It would be super awesome to put a bike rack up here. I'm not sure how it would work with the other gear on the back of my van. But I do of course want to have most of the weight towards the front. So then right here, solar panel would be pretty cool. I don't really have the need to store anything on top of here because of the Free Spirit Lightner setup. So I'm thinking solar panel here and then in the box, you can kind of see how much room we have here. Right now I just have a case of water. We got a paddleboard along for the adventures, some extra clothing and something else which I'll show you guys in a future video. This opening would be the perfect size for a fridge slide out, maybe like half fridge and then on the other side do like a kitchen setup, kind of like a sink, maybe a cutting board or something like that. Or I could just have the whole thing slide out the side. There's still a lot of decisions to make when it comes to setting up a trailer like this, but that's why I'm testing it right now. Now for the Lightner rack, I'm kind of liking this setup already with a small box here, molly panel here, 
definitely enjoying this water port. I haven't even used it to spray anything off yet, but the ease of use is insane. You simply unscrew this cap on the top. You can fill it with a garden hose, and then this is actually how you pressurize the system. So you can just hand pump this, that way you can have the appropriate amount of pressure. Then you just connect a hose, which I have in the owl box, and you can spray a bunch of gear off. Now if the bike mount up front doesn't work, I'm definitely going to give this a try. I've seen a bunch of people actually put bike racks on here and carry something like two mountain bikes. I thought about throwing my motorcycle carrier and my Suron on here. However, the trailer is kind of empty right now, so I didn't want to have a ton of weight towards the back. I'm going to cross that bridge in the future. Now if we pop open this tailgate here, so many things come to mind when I look in here. I have absolutely no idea what I would do with this much room, but of course I could treat it kind of like a truck bed. I could throw my roam boxes in here. You could even build a giant slide out. You could do a massive kitchen setup that goes from the front of the trailer and it would probably come out to about here. For now, I just have my Dometic chairs and the ladder and support poles for the Free Spirit tent in here. And of course, I do have the Inhabit designed floor mats in here, which go perfectly with the Inhabit mats inside of the van. Inhabit has been adapting their products for basically everything that I've seen in the overlanding world recently, so it's really cool that they were able to make one of these for these trailers. That way when I'm throwing dirty gear in here, I can simply pull that out, brush it off, spray it off with a hose, and then throw it back in, and it should keep the trailer looking pretty fresh like it is right now. Now coming around to this side, I didn't even mention, but all of these Lightner boxes lock of course, so they're keyed depending on however many boxes you have. Right now, nothing in here, but this would be perfect for recovery gear, extra camping lanterns, chairs. I mean, the possibilities are so endless. Like I mentioned, this thing is like a blank slate, and I really have to figure out what I'm going to do with all of this room. The van already has a ton of room, so now I have all this extra space, and I'm thinking I'm gonna kinda set this thing up as like a guest house for the van. Now before we lose too much sunlight here, let's check out this new High Country V2 King and see how easy it is to set up. I honestly don't know because I've never really camped with this tent before, but tonight may be the first night. We're starting with the ladder, which I was keeping inside of the trailer. Since this is a hard top tent, that ladder just simply connects to the top with two pins and now I'm gonna go around the outside and undo all of the straps. This thing is going to flip out towards the driver's side of the van just because that's the way I have it mounted right now. Now this thing is already absolutely insane. It is huge. We're talking family of four, maybe even five. Since you can sleep so many people up here, we also have some extra support poles, which just screw into the bottom. Let's take a closer look at this absolute unit of a tent. High Country V2 King. Originally, I thought I like the Lightner rack. I like the Lightner boxes and everything. And if I ran something like the Free Spirit Evo, it would be a super easy setup, just pop straight up, and then I could do a 270 awning. But with a tent like this, on a trailer like this, the side of the tent kind of acts as an awning. So if we get some weather and it rains, you can just kind of huddle under here. You could also throw a kitchen setup in here, maybe a little burner. You could cook on this little fender right here. It kind of acts as like a table. You could easily fit like probably four chairs in here. <sighs> And you can just sit back, relax, have a little bit of shelter from the rain. This is pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. Now I'm getting absolutely destroyed by mosquitoes and bugs right now, so let's climb inside of this tent and check it out. I'm gonna climb in quick and close it up so the bugs hopefully don't get in. I'm just gonna try to prop my camera up in the corner here so you guys can kind of get an idea of how big this freaking tent is. All the way over here in the corner. I could sleep so stretched out. You could sleep one, two, three, and four people, full grown adults in this thing. 
easily, like super, super easily. Now looking around the tent, there are a few things that I'm noticing. One, this is not an air core mattress, but it is an improved kind of like memory foam feeling mattress and it feels really comfortable as of right now. I think in the future, an air core mattress would probably come to the high country, but don't quote me on that for sure. Now everywhere you look, you will see tri-layer, which means this thing will be good even in some cooler climates. You have vents all over the place. I mean, reviewing this tent would take probably 30 minutes in itself. Now coming over to the windows here, we kind of have this like clear plastic type of material and that's actually connected to the rain fly on the outside. So it's gonna be great in cooler temperatures. That's kind of what Free Spirit is known for. But if you're taking this thing out into the desert, you can take off these windows because they are connected to the rain fly entirely. And then this would just be like a huge open rooftop tent with these massive windows all around by the entrance at the door, two side windows, one towards the rear. There would be so much airflow in this thing. I mean, look, I don't know how to show you guys just how big this tent is, but if I lay in the middle and completely starfish out, I can't even touch the walls. I can't touch the corners. This thing is absolutely insane. We have a battery bank over here in these storage pockets, which is going to power the LED strip lights, which you will find in all of the Free Spirit tents. You have bug screens all around, tri layer on all of the doors and windows. Looks like there are hooks everywhere, so you can mount other accessories. You can put your own lights in here. So this tent, the High Country V2, if you have a family, this is exactly what you're going to want. Since my idea behind this trailer with the tent and all of this modularity and stuff is kind of to turn it into like guest sleeping quarters, I think this might be one of the best ways to do it. I'm a little indecisive between the High Country V2 and the Evo Long, but once we sleep in this thing a little bit, then I will make my decision. Oh, look at this. There's even diesel heater hose pass-throughs, just like on my tent the Psy Free Spirit Aspen Light. This thing's just got everything. Crazy. So now for some of my quick final thoughts with the RMO Patrol XCT. The collaboration between RMO and Free Spirit with the Lightner rack and the Free Spirit 10 on top. To be completely honest with you guys, when I had the chance to actually take this thing out and test it, I thought to myself, what the heck? am I going to do with this thing? I already have plenty of room in my Storyteller. I really don't travel with a ton of gear, so what would I really do with this thing? Towing it around is really no problem. With that lock and roll hitch, this thing feels like absolutely nothing off-road. The timber and suspension, the owl wheels, Toyo tires. One cool thing about running the same tires as my van is that I have a spare on the back, so I don't have to carry an extra spare with the trailer. This thing tows great, and I don't even really realize that it's there, so it's not a huge deal for me to bring it with on some future adventures. If I'm ever going out tackling a lot of Type 2 fun, whatever that may be, mountain biking, dirt biking, paddle boarding, or just having a lot of extra camping gear, this is going to be kind of like a gear hauler. Now the more I use this thing and figure out what I like and don't like, I think I'm going to end up setting this thing up into like a multi-purpose type of rig. Because it is a blank slate right now, the possibilities are kind of endless. So for the most part, I'll probably keep it kind of empty and use it as like a huge external gear locker. But then at the same time, I can throw a bunch of extra camping gear into it and kind of host like four extra people. We could easily sleep three adults inside of the Storyteller and four adults inside of this tent. So you could have an entire camp set up for a bunch of people with just a vehicle like this and a trailer like this. Now I've been talking a lot about how it is pulling it with this van, but since the trailer is fairly light, as long as you don't load it up with a ton of gear, you're also going to be able to pull this with a ton of other vehicles. So another idea for a trailer like the Patrol would be to kind of have a entire overland and camping setup that is not constantly on your vehicle. You guys probably know my Tacoma, which is completely rigged out. It's got wild suspension and tires and all this gear bolted all around it. And it's great, I absolutely love it. However, if you only have one vehicle, there's a good chance you don't want to daily drive a vehicle like that. So maybe you just have a stock Tacoma and you like camping and overlanding. You could park this thing on the side of your house. It would easily fit inside of a garage. And then you could drive your truck like normal, but on the weekends, if you want to get out up into the mountains and into places like this, 
you hook up your trailer and you have everything with you ready to go. You could leave it packed 24 seven and just hook up and hit the hills whenever you want to. So there's a lot of use cases for this thing that I didn't really think about until I started pulling this thing around and we began using it. So like I said, these are just my first impressions with this new trailer and if you guys have any ideas of what you think I should do with it, let me know in the comments down below. I have a lot of days of testing with this thing coming up so I'm gonna kind of fine tune things and then once we make it back to Colorado, I'm gonna go pay Free Spirit a visit and then we'll probably tweak some things. I'm thinking we're going to do a fridge slide, maybe a battery system and solar up front. This tent so far is super impressive. We will see how it is sleeping with just two people in there. Maybe I'll swap that out. I think it would be really cool to do an Evo with a 270 awning. I would of course pack all the Lightner boxes with a bunch of gear and if you guys enjoyed this video then maybe I will make some more trailer related content in the future so let me know. That's all that I had for now. If you guys want to check out anything that I talked about in this video I'll try to leave some links in the description down below and if you are new to this channel consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every single week. As always, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.